Hi, Ray Hayden here, and this video is part of the experimental video experience that I'm doing. Uh, these different types of videos, playing around with different things to try to get videos up to YouTube effectively and efficiently, and with the quality that I kind of want for my particular videos. And uh, a lot of the things I've been working on over the years, I've been a self-employed uh, videographer professionally since 1992, and I... Um, yeah, so I got a lot of experience with having bad audio. So I, you know, video, audio is one of the biggest things I work on. It's like if you have audio that looks, if you have a video that looks decent but sounds great, you're going to have a better result uh, on people enjoying your video a whole lot more. Audio is is so vitally important. Um, it's unbelievable, and you probably know that by now anyway. Uh, let me close this mixer thing because uh, this is the OBS is Open Broadcaster software. Here's the website for it. And uh, I want to touch on the settings really briefly, uh, very briefly. I'm talking about audio. Um, I have my 48 kilohertz selected in stereo. And other than that, I can change this desktop audio device to be my Shure X2U device, but you know, I can leave it at default and it works just fine. I've done a couple of experiments with it and it works just fine. So there's really nothing else in the settings I need to play with. Um, but let me open that microphone mixer again. If I click on this button, this window opens up. Let me move it up a just a little bit. Now, the desktop audio is basically if I'm playing a video game in the background and I'm making a video game uh, video, like gameplay video or something like that, um, this is the audio that's playing from the computer game in the background. The audio input capture, which is this top line down here, but the bottom line down here, um, this particular thing is basically like a VU meter telling me the, the strength and you see my voice is like bouncing with this line here because this line is measuring the audio going into the device. Now, I don't want it pegged all the way over here on the right. That's bad, and that means I'm yelling at you, and I'm sure you're very nice people, and I don't want to yell at you. So, um, not wanting to yell at anybody, uh, because it's exhausting. <laughs> um, the, uh, I want to make sure that my audio is, is of the right level for the particular videos I want to make. So that's why I'm making this particular experimental video. And I think that I got the volumes just about right. When I do my editing in a little bit, I'll be testing that. So. Um, I picked up a couple of devices. Oh, first, let me tell you what I'm using here. First, I'm using o Open Broadcaster software. And let me tell you about the microphone I'm using here from B&H Photo Video in New York. <clears throat> this is the short, by the way, they don't pay me any money for this. And that's why I'm actually covering their price with their own pictures. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know when you watch this video and I don't know if their prices fluctuate or how often or when or whatever. But, uh, you know, so I'm covering it up. I'm using their picture because I usually buy all my stuff from from short, uh, from b and anyway. So uh, with that, all my, all my computer accessories, right, the computer build I did, all the components came from, um, came from uh, B&H, all right? So with that, uh, the Shure SM93 is a microphone that I'm using. If you notice these clips here, there's one and two. There's like a double clip if you want to do two microphones. I don't know, one is a backup or whatever, and you only want to use one clip instead of two. <laughs> there you go. I've seen a lot of times, uh, I've seen a number of times where people have like, they have a security backup you know, kind of a microphone going on, and they'll actually have a microphone in each lapel. Or maybe they'll have them in different places on the same lapel kind of thing. So anyways, but that's a lavalier microphone that I use. I just clip it onto my shirt. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, sometimes in my videos, you'll see the microphone clear as bell. I'm not trying to hide it. And it's just hanging there on my shirt. And the wire's hanging straight down the front of my shirt. It's hilarious. Anyways, uh, but this is a microphone I like to use. And I'm using a lavalier microphone. I like to use this particular one. Um, these are all the goodies you get in... Um, these are, yeah, these are all the goodies you get in the bag. There is a, a little carrying case that comes with this thing too, by the way. Uh, so you get a carrying case with that. Uh, this one thing, this is the XLR adapter here, this big shaft thing. It's heavy too, by the way. <clears throat> it's like bulletproof. Anyways, but this thing here is the thing that connects into the three-prong XLR connector. This little dot right here on top is a button. If you push this button, you can separate the wire from this shaft right here, okay? Um, I forget what it's called. It's got a name to it. I forget what it is. Um, but here's the microphone here. It's kind of small. This wire is thin. It's a small skinny little wire and it just slips into this little connector right here. Um, a lot of, I work with a lot of non-professional actors, I guess, they are, as they're expert witnesses. Expert witnesses are not, you know, professional television people or, or movie actors or anything like that. So they don't, are not very well trained in how to deal with microphones and stuff like that. And I've had a number of people breaking my clips. So over the years, I've pretty much said, no, nobody gets to wear my microphones anymore. Everybody gets a table microphone. And if they put anything on the microphone, I say, Mike. <laughs> and the videographer is not supposed to talk. So when I say something, everybody listens. So it's, I feel like E.F. Hutton, if you remember the old commercial, it's funny. Anyways, if not, <laughs> when the videographer talks, everybody listens. So um, anyways, uh, that's the microphone I'm using. And now 
I'm, I'm recording into my computer. Okay, so if I'm recording into my computer, what do I use? I use the X2U. I originally bought the Blue Yeti microphone and I love the thing. It's actually, it's just a great looking device and it really sounded great and it really recorded great sound. But uh, if you see this little picture right here, that's a picture of headphones. You plug your headphones into here and to this device, the Blue Yeti microphone had the same thing. You plug your headphones directly into the side of the Blue Yeti microphone and you could monitor your sound live with no delay and you could hear what you sound like before it gets recorded to, to your computer. So it's great, everything's great. My monitor for my headphones stopped working. It just, it, it got weaker, weaker, weaker and just died. So it was kind of a lemon or something like that as a you know, manufacturer warranty issue or whatever. Uh, I sent it back and I ordered the Shure X2U instead. It does the same thing. I already have all these XLR microphones. Why not make use of them? And uh, this is a USB connector. How, easy peasy. How could you get any easier than that? So let's go through the uh, parts of this X2U device, which is a very simple device. It's awesome. Uh, and let's start from the bottom. Is a USB connector. Let's go to the wires here for a second. This wire, that's that square USB connector right there. That's what plugs into the bottom of the X2U. This other thing is the regular USB connector like your mouse or something might have. And you just plug that right into your computer and you're good to go. What you're going to see happen next, let's go to the straight up and down picture here. You plug that in the bottom, this USB light's going to light up. Assuming your computer's turned on and power's going there and everything else. This USB will light up and mine's green and it's round. This other light on mine is orange. It looks blue, but it's lit up and it's orange and it's square. And this button right above it is square and that says plus 48V. That means it's phantom power. The phantom power is then on. Once you push this button, this light comes on. That's just telling you you activated the phantom power. Now there's a, a monitor wheel right here to adjust what you're listening to. I'll tell you about that in a minute. There's a volume wheel here that how loud you're listening to what you're listening to. And then there's the microphone gain wheel up here. And then above that, there's a light. The light is associated with the microphone gain wheel. The volume is associated with your earphones right here. And the monitor is whether or not you're listening to yourself and your microphone, or if like say you're making a game video, you're listening to the game in the background, that would be like roll the wheel all the way up and you're listening to the game and not yourself, you can't hear yourself talk. If you roll the wheel all the way down, you're listening to yourself talk and you can't hear the game at all. If you roll it somewhere in between, you'll get a different amount of level between your voice and the game in the background. Sometimes when you're making a gaming video, the game noise in the background is distracting and will take you off of what you want to say. So what you would do is kind of listen to yourself more and listen to the game less. Now I'm going to tell you this, this monitor wheel and this volume wheel have absolutely nothing, nothing to do with the sound you're recording. All they are is monitoring uh, things to basically judging what you're doing. You can listen to your volume, you, you can change your volume of what you're listening in your ears live while you're recording it, and you can change what it is specifically you're listening to while you're recording it. It has no effect on what you're recording. This does. The microphone gain is basically turning up how, turning down how quiet you are or blasting how loud you are. This light is a three color light and it, it, it's, you know, it's only one light, but it changes colors. It's either green, it's either off, it's green, or it's uh, yellow or it's red. So it's off, green, yellow, or red. Now green, yellow, red is like a stoplight. Green is okay, but you're getting kind of loud. Yellow is you're clipping, you're, you're about to be clipping, and red is, oh, you're clipping, you're yelling at your audience. So the microphone gain is like the master volume control of how loud your microphone is. And then at the very top is the XLR connector where you connect your microphone. Now the, SM, uh, the SM93, this is it. This is the part that connects over to the top of the uh, X2U device. And now, so you have it. So that's how I'm recording these things. I'm talking into the SM93 microphone and I'm recording it into my computer through the Shure X2U. Now let me flip back over here to uh, bro Open Broadcaster Software or Open Broadcaster Studio or software here, okay. And this is what I'm talking about here. This, I need to change so that I'm not yelling at you too much. Now, here's a problem I have. There's no, you know, the standard operating procedure for using the X2U would be turn the volume up. Let's go back to the X2U. Turn this volume up until this green light comes on and just flash, flash, flash. Every now and then, when you're getting louder, it'll flash. So, you'll, you know, you'll keep your voice, you'll be able to monitor your voice and keep your voice within the proper range for the microphone and for the device and all that and everything's fine. However, for using the open broadcaster software for me and my particular device, I have to change things up a little bit and I have to, um, 
I have to make, I had to turn down the, the gain control. So for me, in using the X2U back here, uh, my little light doesn't light up at all. <laughs> I had to turn the microphone gain down so far, and let me show you why, because I have this set for 100%, both of these. I have the computer set for 100%, and by the way, I'll tell you, when I'm playing the game, the, really the volume for the game is only like here, okay? But when I play it back in my editing software, it's not uh, you know, loud enough. My, my voice speaking is like, not, if I try to match it, it's not loud enough. And if I try to turn it up too high, it's too loud, I'm yelling at you, it gets distorted, and it's crazy. But I think that this is about the level here. And what I have to do is I have to basically, before I start recording, get the sound levels right. And then I can do the recording. And I won't know, by the way, until I get this thing in the editing booth. And I've been recording for like 11 minutes now, so I'm gonna wrap this up at this point. Um, and then I'm going to talk, well, let me talk real quick about another, two other devices. I've been playing this game and the game that I've been, oh, by the way, because I built the computer I built, I had to put in a really nice video card into my computer, edit, my video editing computer, the one I'm editing this video on, okay? I'm not doing much editing. I'm just going to put a title on the front and a fade out to black in the back. And it's pretty much, that's all the editing I'm going to do on this video, probably, okay? So, um, but I've been playing a video game because I bought this really nice computer, uh, components everything, got this nice video card. They gave me the Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands game. I had a choice between two games. I picked that one. I got it for free, and there you have it. So um, what I did was um, I, I got the Wildlands game. So when I played the game, I played it with this device here. This is a Logitech TrackMan Marble Mouse, okay? Um, it's got some programmable buttons. It's like, you know what? That's the left button. That's the right button. And this little button here is either forward or back if you're browsing pages or whatever. And this one here is whatever the other button isn't. So if this one's back and this one's forward, this one's forward and this one's back, that's what it is. But it's very easy to play the video game with this. And the reason why is because you're not moving them. You don't have to move the mouse all around. Like here you see the arrow moving around like crazy because I'm moving the, physically moving the mouse. Now I actually have the trackball connected to my computer at the same time. And now I'm just, I'm just this ball. I'm just rolling the ball around. I'm not moving anything but the ball and my mouse moves. Or I can move my entire arm or hand or whatever. Yeah, it's actually my entire arm moving around and I can move it that way or you just roll the ball around. Okay, so which one's easier when you're playing a game? Do you want to be sliding your mouse all over the place or you just want to use a trackball? Well, I just want to use a trackball. Now here's the problem. The trackball, if you'll notice, doesn't have a center wheel. Let's look at this version of it um, next to it here. So here's another version. This version is a thumb ball and in all honesty, it didn't work as well for me. I don't, I didn't, you know, I tried one of these in the store. I was playing around with it a little bit and it's like, eh, you know, it's not really working. But this one here has the mouse wheel on it, okay? Now in the Wildlands game, in Ghost Recon Wildlands, you need, a, you need the wheel. <laughs> you gotta have it. And the reason why, I'll show, uh, well, I won't show you, but I'll tell you about it. Is, and here's, here's the device right here. Let me see, I got it right here from B&H. Here, this is what it looks like. The thing's got lights all over it. Uh, it's got a light on the wheel. It's got a light down here. But by the way, when your hand's on the mouse, when your palm is on the mouse and everything, you pick it up with a couple of fingers, uh, like a claw, the claw hold is what they call it. If you're picking it up and moving around like that, this here is covered up, you can't see it. That's a light that's lit up and it changes all kinds of different colors. Right now mine's going from green to purple, okay? The wheel lights up and it, and it changes different colors. You can program it to do all kinds of crazy different things. Uh, however, you know, whatever blows your shirt up, you know? And then this little light right here actually is important. Let's go over to a different angle of this. Uh, there's, there's some lights up front. Let me pick up my mouse and look up there. Yep, there sure are lights. Mine are currently yellow and they're changing to green. <laughs> Adorable. Okay, I don't see that. That's pointing away from me. I don't even see that. So uh, adorable though it may be, and maybe somebody else might be impressed, I can't see it. Um, but this light here is actually very uh, important. Uh, the rate of mouse movement changes when you click on these two buttons. If you click this button, let me see, it goes to a light blue color and this mouse will fly all over the place. I'm not moving it very much, it's just flying. If I click it all the way back to where that light turns red, on my particular mouse, I think you can change it to whatever color you want. It doesn't move that much. I have to move the mouse a lot to get it to move that distance. And all the way over to this like light blue color, I just move the mouse a little bit. I can't even, I can't even find the mouse, okay? It's crazy. Um, but I take it to the red, which is the slowest motion. That's for fine detail work. I'll work up in this light blue color when this thing here turns a light blue color on mine. Uh, and I think you can change it to whatever color you want. I think you can program whatever color you want or I have it just changing colors over time. But this one, this, this one here I have, it remains a, at a color when I press the button. It's like if I press this button a bunch of times, mine turns red and it, that never changes color from red. 
unless I click this button, then the color changes. That gives me an indication of where I'm at. So I recognize which color. Now green, I've got it green, and that moves the mouse pretty much. Uh, this light blue color works pretty good, and then red is when I'm playing a game, okay? So that's, you know, so you know your settings. When you're using a mouse, it's nice to be able to use the tools to make them work for you. Uh, these two buttons are like, uh, let me go back to that track man thing. This button here, which is forward and back, that's what that button's like. Let me go back to this one here. That's what these buttons, uh, I'm sorry, these two buttons here are. And, you know, they're easy. They're in, a right, they're in a good place. It's a nice, comfortable place for them. Then you have this button up here, which is programmable as well. And you can click on the wheel. So you can also click on the wheel too. That's also a button. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six, seven, eight buttons on here. Okay, so that's a lot of buttons. Uh, and they have ones with have even more buttons on them. So anyways, this is the mouse I got for playing the video game. And I find it's useful for a lot of other things as well. It's helpful. These things, these additional functions have uh, use in my video editing software and things of that nature. Now, this particular mouse was not that expensive, but it also wasn't that cheap. When I had uh, been using, when I picked this thing up, I think I paid $19.99 for it. Okay. I don't know what Newegg's charging for it. I'm not going to go see because their prices could change and I don't want you to see a price that's not there. Plus, in all honesty, this would probably be a better version of the mouse. This one here has additional buttons on it. They're probably programmable. You just have to get used to using the thumb mouse. And even this version of the mouse here, this is the Logic uh, Man uh, Marble. It's got, uh, you can play, do some fine detail stuff with the, you can put your thumb here and your other fingers up here and do some fine detail work with that. It'll work pretty nice uh, for you probably. Uh, here's another angle of something if you want to get a bit, uh, different uh, kind of grip um, uh, angle on it or whatever. Uh, maybe that's a diff totally different mouse. But these also seem to have like, I don't know if there's a wheel on here, but the wheel is kind of an important thing to have. That's why I think something along Oh, yeah, this one here has a wheel on it. This one here might be a good one. For me, this would probably be a good one. The optical, oh, it's cordless. Okay, that, that's a loser for me. It needs to not be cordless. I need to kind of have the trackball like in this area, and then the rest of it's fine. I, you know, I don't care about the rest of it, but I need to have the trackball like this is like the most, this is like just awesome. And if it was like an optical thing, instead of, this has a little tiny ball, uh, little tiny ball bearings inside. There's like three or four of them in there. And that kind of is a pain in the neck because they do collect dust. Our hands get dirty and everything. We're touching the trackball. We're rolling it around. And so we have to clean out that little socket. We just lift the ball out and just clean, wipe out the socket every now and then. Uh, but anyways, so there you have it. Um, and the, like I said, the mouse that I'm using right now, because it's a laser, you know, it's kind of got a laser dot. You know, light, oh, you can see the light really well. It's lit up here. Um, but you see that um, the... Uh, it's a laser pointing mouse. They show the bottom of this thing at all? No, not really. But so if they show the bottom of it, you can see there's nothing. There's no moving parts on this thing other than the buttons and, and the wheel and stuff like that. But I mean, there's no moving part underneath the thing. Like you know, you're rolling a ball around on a dirty counter. So um, you know that that's where it is. So I bought this mouse. I'm playing around with it. I like it very much. I'm getting used to it pretty fast. And if I get really used to it, I'll I'll uh, probably get more of them. I would, I would probably get more of them. If I decide to go that route, I'll make a, a better review of the particular mouse and talk about the functions and features and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into any high-tech stuff because I don't think it's really important. Just so you know that, you know, if I do a review on something, I'm not going to do a bad review on anything because if it's bad, I'm not going to talk about it. But if it's a good thing, uh, maybe I'll start doing the Ray review things. I, I thought about doing that a while ago, and maybe I'll start that up. Um, again, this is an experimental video for uh, working with the uh, Open Broadcaster software and trying to get my SM93 to work through my Shure X2U into my computer to uh, record really good sound all the way through a video. So with that, until I catch it, it's 20 minutes. So uh, when I talk to you in the next video, or if you, if you skip through this one here, I see you in the next video. Take care and be well.